This is our friend's dining room, and they've hired us to give it a whole new look. But instead of showing them our mood board and plants like we normally would, we've asked them to trust us and they're actually not going to see any of this until it is totally finished. Now we've earned that trust by redoing their kitchen and their living room over the last few weeks. So if you missed those videos, you'll definitely wanna go back and check those out. Doing those other spaces has given us a great feel for their design style and I am confident that they are going to love what we came up with. So welcome to the adventures of my DIY wife and her her non-handy husband. Before we get started, we want to say thank you to today's sponsor, Decenio. Decenio offers a wide variety of prints and frames, and they update their collection regularly, so there's something for everyone in every style. One of my favorite features is the gallery wall tool, which you can use to help envision your dream wall. You start by choosing your background, and then you can experiment with different sized gallery walls. Next, you can choose from a variety of prints, and it is super helpful to be able to see your idea on screen before actually ordering ordering your prints. And then finally, you can choose whether or not you want to add frames to all of your prints. And they have lots of options, including black, white, wood, and gold. Decenio ships to countries worldwide, including the US, within five days. So if you're interested in checking out Decenio, be sure to click on the link in the description and use code DIYWIFE to get 40% off of prints now through April 14th. Work in this room actually started several weeks ago when William pulled out the old laminate flooring so that we could have the same vinyl planks that we use in the rest of this house continued into this space as well. Today I'm starting on the main feature of this space and that is a custom built-in banquette. I started by measuring and then taping out my measurements to get a good visual and make sure it looked okay and then sketching out my plans so I could get a good materials list. <laughs> Okay, so we got all of our measurements, materials list ready, so we're running to Home Depot to buy all of the wood so we can get these benches built. And we have a couple of extra cute little helpers with us today. <laughs> all right. pause for a quick second and give a plug for last week's video. Our normal Friday posting schedule got delayed by a few days, so not all of you have seen it yet. But I want to highlight it because it was one of Andrea's most beautiful transformations to date, and I think it showed through in our friends' responses to the space. So if you missed last week's video, check for the link in the description below. There's the man. Now we're ready. Once we got back from Home Depot, we actually had another job that we had to take care of. That's good, it's good. You might have noticed that we've actually had two fridges in this house for a while, and that's because the door style on the original fridge wouldn't allow the doors to open all the way as they were up against a wall. We're out. So our friend Tyler was gracious enough to come again with his truck and help us load this thing up and take it back. And just for the record, moving a refrigerator is no easy task. Look at that, though. That's gonna work! Ah! Get out of it! Easy peasy, man. Oh. Ah, ah, ah. Look manly. Yeah. While the guys were returning the refrigerator, I got started building the framework for the built-in benches out of two by fours. Once I had all of the two by fours cut to length, I had quite a few pocket holes to drill. What are you doing now? Assembling. You look really excited about it. <laughs> Next, it was time to start assembling the framework and I found a large clamp to be extremely helpful when doing this. I'll also go ahead and point out that I decided to turn my two by fours this way and assemble them using pocket holes because these benches will actually open up and this will give them maximum storage space on the inside.
finished assembling the first bench, I repeated the same process for the second one that would complete the other side of the L. Once I had all of the 2x4 framework finished, it was time to make this look a little bit prettier. First, I covered all of the sides with quarter inch plywood. I then added trim using pre-primed 1x5s for the baseboard piece and then pre-primed 1x3s for all of the rest. You know what's happening to your hair? It's blowing all over the place. Blowing in the wind. <laughs> As is the case with most projects, we weren't actually able to finish this in a day, so we did a quick cleanup and then came back the next day ready to make more progress. The next morning it was raining and so we decided to start work inside and then would finish up the rest of the build when the weather cleared up. Oh, sorry. Just oh. run me into the light, why don't you? Get a little morning cross fit in it. Wow, that looks so cool. So we're gonna do a board and batten in here that's gonna go up behind the built-in bench, but then continue around the room. Normally, I'd probably go like about this height, but we're gonna have these back cushions that match the bench cushions that are gonna hang probably about here. And I want them to hang off of my top board for my board and batten. So I'm trying to figure out, okay, what makes sense that doesn't look funny. And so I'm thinking I'm gonna go just a couple inches below this window. I don't want it too close and I definitely don't want it touching because I want to be able to hang something off of it. Just bringing everything in here helps me get a good visual on it and make sure I don't regret my choice later. <laughs> Once I had figured out and then measured and marked where I wanted my board and batten to go, we started getting the room ready to paint. Oh, watch that. <laughs> I've actually found it's easier to paint before installing all of the board and batten because a big flat wall is easier to roll. Our friends love the color yellow and so for the top portion of the wall above the board and batten, I'll be using this beautiful yellow color that my friend Justine has used in her house and it is Perfect for this space. Oh, okay. juicy. Is that a pineapple smoothie? <laughs> in painting walls, I like to cut in first around the edges with a brush and then roll. And with this paint, I ended up needing two coats to get a good solid coverage. just how light that yellow was. I was feeling like mustard today. <laughs> it looks good. Yes. I feel like I really want it's a corn little, dog. A little different. I know. I don't know why. After a quick lunch break, I started rolling the white paint on the bottom portion of the wall where the board and batten would go. No, Cannon. There's paint in here. Paint and puppy paws do not mix. I'm sorry, buddy. This is the same white we used in the rest of the house, which is one of my favorite whites, Benjamin Moore Simply White. It's looking so good in here. I love the mustard and mayonnaise colors that you have. Those are perfect. Thankfully, by the time I finished painting, the weather had cleared up and we were ready to finish building the benches. You're so strong. Woo! Gosh, this thing's so heavy. I started out by finishing up the trim on the second bench and to attach all of those boards, I used liquid nails and then a brad nailer. filled in all of the nail holes and cracks with a wood filler.
while the wood filler dried, I started installing all of the board and batten. <laughs> For all of these top horizontal pieces, I used pre-prime one by fours and I went around with a stud finder making sure that I was nailing into the studs. I continued the same process around the room using my level to make sure everything was nice and level. What are you smiling about over there? Just measure the wall and quit messing around. Hey. Looks smoking good, just like you. I went ahead and pulled all of the old baseboards out because I'll be using primed one by fives as the bottom of my board and batten and that will also act as a baseboard. By this time, the wood filler on the benches was dried and so I gave it a quick sanding and then blew everything off. Finally, we were ready to bring the benches in and they are looking so good in the space. Oh, Did you look at this? <laughs> Would you just look at it? I went ahead and attached the benches to the wall using wood screws. Dude, what is going on in here? <laughs> it sounds like machine gun. Take a chill pill. Once the benches were installed, I started measuring and cutting pre-primed one by fives that would act as the baseboard and the bottom of the board and back. Before we finished for the day, I went ahead and added a second coat of white paint to the walls and then the first coat of paint to the built-in benches. The next day was an exciting one as it marked the final day of this project and the day we get to reveal it to our friends. Hi. Hi, Dumb and Dumber here. My toe, man. You got a prop on? <laughs> but that also okay. means we had a lot of work to get done. We started out by loading up the new dining room table and chairs and this was no easy task. I don't know. Oh, it's no, that's not gonna work. That's a no. Could you drive like that? We could drive like this. We've done it before, I guess. I'm so embarrassed. You can't tell, but our, our back door is open. Oh, it's not gonna work. Oh, my God. 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 Oh, my
Once I had all of the vertical boards in, I caulked all of the edges and then went back with a damp rag to wipe off the excess caulk. After the board and batten was finished, I was ready to measure and cut the plywood for the top of the benches. What you got there? Mattress topper. Taking a nap. Okay. Sounds great. Taking a nap. Yeah. Did you just slap my butt when you walked by? No, man. Dreaming. For the cushions, I ended up using a two inch memory foam mattress topper as this ended up being cheaper than buying the foam from the fabric or craft store. Dude, it literally smells like confetti cake, doesn't it? So weird. It smells just like confetti cake. Your nose is broken. Wait, never mind. That's this yogurt. I was sitting right here. I was like, it smells was just like, like confetti cake. That's because my nose is right over this. Wow, that smells good. There are a lot of different ways you could go about making cushions for a bench seat like this, but rather than making an actual separate cushion, I decided to attach it directly to the plywood so the entire thing would lift up in one piece. For the cushion covers, I went with this faux leather that I picked up at Joann's. After cutting the foam to size, I was able to lay everything out, cut the leather to size, and then use my stapler to attach it to the plywood. Sweet! You got this, babe! When upholstering a bench seat in this way, I found it's helpful if you add a couple of staples in the middle that are opposite each other and then work out from there, pulling just tight enough to get out any wrinkles, but not so tight that you're going to see all of the inconsistencies and lumps when you finish. What a looker. Looking good. After I finished the seat cushions, I repeated the same process for the backrest cushions. Corn dog for you. Corn dog for you. Dog. Oh, it came out of its sheath. Okay, it's like, where's mine? Okay, so I'm making these back cushions that are actually gonna hang from this top rail. I have one cushion finished. I'm gonna show you real quick how I did it. Basically, I'm using this, what's called belt strapping. I ended up picking up it at Walmart because Joanne's was out. But most craft stores will have it. Just use my stapler. That should be plenty strong. And I'm gonna put some screws to hold these on, like so. Looking good. I also picked up these little antique brass D-rings. They're the size that fits this one inch belt strapping. So it's not um, stretchy. Once I finished all of the cushions, I took all of them out so we could do the final coat of white paint. At this point, we were running really short on time because our friends would be home in just a couple of hours, and so Dean grabbed a paintbrush and jumped in with me so we could get this done. It's such an honor to carry the world's largest cutting board. While the paint dried, I worked on assembling this beautiful new dining room table. This is the Lily dining table from Castlery, and it is absolutely beautiful. I also decided to go ahead and take down the old light fixture and replace it with a flush mount that didn't hang down at all. I switched the light for a few reasons. One, because I didn't like the way it hung down in front of the window. Two, because with adding these built-in benches, the table would no longer be centered, which would mean that pendant light hanging down would not be centered over the table. And three, removing this light made this room feel much more open. Before we started bringing furniture and all of the finishing touches into this room, we did a quick cleanup. Next, I was able to frame and then hang up this artwork that Desenio sent us, and I love the fun pop of color that these prints add to this room. Finally, we were able to bring in the new dining table, the bench cushions, and the back cushions, and it is starting to look so good in here. We finished out the space with new dining chairs, a plant, and a vase on the table, and we were finally ready to surprise our friends with their brand new dining room. Look at it! 
Okay, the rest of the house is a mess, but the dining room looks insane. Okay, they're like waiting in the driveway. This is how every reveal day goes. We're like scrambling, we're like, oh, I can get done this time. It's like an hour later, we're like, sorry guys, you can come in now. And that's why it's always a mess in the background. We don't get to do this that many more times. Three, two, one, go. Dean and Andrew, y'all are killing it. <laughs> killing it, man. This is beautiful. So good. So humbling. So awesome. It's so Thank beautiful. Thank you, God. Thank you, Davises. And just yeah. everybody, man. This is like a lifetime of Thanksgiving right here. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna be singing Amazing Grace like every other day. Well, how incredibly good does this dining room space look? I mean, the mood board for it looked incredible, but then when you see it in person, it's even better. So way to go. Go, darling. Yeah, I was so excited about this space because I had landed on such a cool design. And then when we finished, I was like, this really does. It looks like the mood board, but like a hundred times better. And those leather cushions with the part hanging on the back, I mean, it like screams little coffee shop nook, which is like what they love. And so I just, I really feel like we nailed it. And it is such a fun space. We nailed it. <laughs> we nailed it. Okay, let's be honest. She nailed it. Hey, you filming is what funds the project. <laughs> hey, there you go. We're a team. It is a we. We're a team. Here. So now let's talk about the cost breakdown on some of this project because again, you've done an incredible amount of work for really not that much. Okay, so all of the wood for the bench was about $300. I spent another $100 on just that foam mattress topper. I mean, it's a two inch memory foam king size, but it came out to be exactly the amount that I needed. And then that faux leather was another $100 because I got five yards of it. So that's even on sale. That's actually a great price for a heavy duty upholstery fabric like that. So our total cost for the bench itself was right around $500. All of the materials for the board and batten and the paint was another $100, $150. And so our total cost for everything except for the furniture and artwork was about $650 for this space. So with wood prices being just crazy high, it's not the cheapest project ever, but I think for the amount of impact you're yeah. getting, I mean, it's a crazy good deal. Like I would gladly budget for that to have that kind of unique character built into a space. So that's it for this week's video, but we're gonna carry on in this project into the last room that we're doing in this house, and that is the pantry <laughs> space. So join us next week as the adventure continues, and we'll see you there. I'm fine. You're hungry, because you didn't eat breakfast. I'm hungry, I had a banana for breakfast, thank you very much. Whose fault is that? Well, I thought we would eat lunch you at said, 12, like normal human yeah. beings. We don't eat lunch at 12, we push it back. 1.30, You should two. know better, you should know better. I ate breakfast, I'm fine. <laughs> Ready? Is this look good? <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I am a little bit hungry. But we got all the measurement. Hey, we're trying to film an interview here. The little cuties. Take two. This is so good. She's fat. She's fat. What do you think about the room, Kenan? It's so amazing. Do you like it? <laughs> oh, I forgot to hit record. Did you really? <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm just teasing you. I've seen if you believe me.